Almost 70 years ago, deep in the hills of Appalachia, several West Virginians were visited and stalked by a creature they could barely describe. With a horrifying visage, the creature appeared from the mist and forever entered their nightmares. Could it have been just a misremembered trauma? Or was it aliens? Hello everyone and welcome again to Was It Aliens, where I tell the story of an alien experience as it was explained by the people who lived it, and my two guests, a skeptic and a believer, decide once and for all, was it aliens? Once again, I am joined by Merle and Aria. How are you, friends? Thank you so much for having us, Matt. Looking forward to, to another fun alien discussion with you. Yep, I'm feeling great. I'm feeling ready. I'm wearing my tropical shirt. Yes, it has nothing to do with the story today. Oh. Let's just get into it. How about it? Let's do it. Yes. I'm ready. The story of the Flatwoods monster begins in 1952, incidentally in the town of Flatwoods, West Virginia. On the evening of September 12th, young Flatwoods residents Edward May, Freddie May, Neil Nunley, and Tommy Heyer were playing on the lawn of Flatwoods Elementary School at around 7 p.m. Their fun was interrupted when a bright light flashed across the sky above them. Mesmerized, they watched it until it disappeared, seemingly landing on the hillside of G. Bailey Fisher's farm. The boys, excited to inspect the crash site, rushed to the May home and notified Kathleen, the mother of Edward and Freddie, as to what they saw. Kathleen called National Guardsman Eugene Lemon, who joined them, and with that, and of course the family dog Richie, the investigation party was formed. Got a little group, they got a little search party going. Yeah, Iron Giant vibes. Yes, yes, I've not seen it. When the group arrived at the site, they noticed a pulsating red light, and when Eugene shined his flashlight toward the hills, the group saw a 10-foot tall creature with a spade-shaped head and a dark metal dress. The creature had twisted, spindly hands that looked like claws and glowing orange eyes. Additionally, it seemed to be levitating off the ground. The creature and crash site were accompanied by a lingering mist that smelled sickening and unrecognizable. It is said that the group was chased away when the being suddenly hissed and began to float towards them. Kathleen and Eugene reported the incident to the authorities, who searched the area and found nothing. Hmm, that's quite, that's quite freaky. And I will say this, I'm going to give it credit. This is much more unique of an alien depiction than we typically hear. That's very true. In other stories. I mean, I've never heard of an alien that's wearing a metal dress with a spade-shaped head that's levitating. It's very specific. I can't even really picture it in my head. Oh. Well, you, you must. Okay, so this is the point in which I want to try something fun. Okay. Ah. In the story, Kathleen and Eugene call the authorities and explain what they saw, and they drew it up. I want to do the same with y'all. You both have a notepad, and based on their descriptions, I want to see your rendering. Mm. Then I'll show you what the universally accepted depiction is. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay. I like that. I'm excited for that. All right. You ready? Here's the description okay. again. I'm ready. The group saw a 10 foot tall creature with a spade shaped head and a dark metal dress. The creature had twisted spindly hands that looked like claws and glowing orange eyes. Additionally, it seemed to be levitating off the ground. I am now ready to look upon these creations. Ready? Yep. One, two, three, and. That's not bad, Merle specifically. Oh! Have you seen this? No, I've never seen it. I was afraid this would look too much like garlic. You wouldn't like think garlic. it was scary. It does look a little like garlic. What does yours look like? I put like oh a spade. Oh my God. <laughs> yours looks like a friendly neighbor. Looks like yours nice kind of looks like a drawing from a child. Why is it smiling? <laughs> the smile makes it creepy, if anything. Imagine something like this floating with you with an evil smile on its face. Terrifying. Okay. Well, sure. right. great, yeah, great yeah, job. Uh, I'm going to show you now the actual thing. Oh my gosh. Okay. Wow, yours looks so similar. Mine is spot on. Yours is really similar. Thank you. You know what's amazing is the thing with mine is that I thought the head was too small, so I added this extra layer around it, and it actually makes it look perfectly like it. Yeah, some t people think the head was just that shape, and some people are like, maybe it was a hood oh, that was yeah, spade yeah. shaped, but very good. No winner needs to be declared. I think we all know. In our hearts. It was Merle. It was me. With those depictions in your mind, let's continue with the story. Okay. okay. 
Once the experience was reported, it appeared what the group had seen might have been spotted by Mrs. Audra Harper in the town of Heaters, about five miles north of Flatwoods, only a short time after it was seen by Kathleen, Eugene, and the kids. In Audra's experience, she recounted that while walking with a friend to a nearby store, they took a shortcut through the woods, and half a mile into their trip, she noticed a ball on fire on the hill they were passing. When Harper looked back to see where the fireball had been, it had disappeared. In its place stood a tall and dark silhouette of a figure seemingly in the shape of a man. The two women ran away through rocks and boulders around the hillside to escape the being. On September 13th, only one day after the first reported sighting, another sighting occurred near Strange Creek, about 20 miles south of Flatwoods. George and Edith Snitowski, along with their 18-month-old son, were driving around a rural area between Clay and Braxton County on Route 4. Their car suddenly died, and Mr. Snitowski tried to start it up again with no success. The road was deserted, and it would appear no help would be coming anytime soon. The air began to fill with a sulfurous smell, and their baby began to cry. Shortly after, a strange bright light appeared, and the couple saw a 10-foot-tall creature hovering over the front of their car. According to the creature, the couple... Sorry. According to the... <laughs> we, got, we reached out to the creature. Whoa! <laughs> to hear his side of things. According to the couple, the creature dragged its lizard-like hand across the car's hood and then drifted into the surroundings. Once they could no longer see the creature, the couple's car started up again, and they drove away quickly. While there were many similarities to previous cases, their description did not include a spade-shaped head, but instead described the creature's head as reptilian and bony. In the years since, the creature has come to be known by many names, such as the Phantom of Flatwoods, the Braxton County Monster, and even, affectionately, Braxy. Oh, that's I love cute. That. Right? Maybe a little bit more Arya is drawing for Braxy. That's, that's yes. Braxy. It's Braxy! And despite only a few sightings, the hysteria the creature instilled has caused the Flatwoods Monster to become something of a legend in West Virginia. But, in the case of the Flatwoods Monster, was it aliens? Once again, not everyone thinks so. So let's get into the theories as to what might actually be the case. While many are convinced that the group really did see something that night, whether or not it was actually a monster or something supernatural has been hotly debated. Some are quick to point out that this sighting takes place only five years after the Roswell incident, which had catapulted the idea of UFOs to the forefront of the American imagination. And that possibly, when encountering things like streaks in the sky, there was already a popular language to try and explain this phenomena through extraterrestrial activity. Some say they might have just seen airplane beacons that were used to help alert and guide aircrafts. This could make sense considering these were known to be in Flatwoods at the time. It's also worth noting, local newspapers did report a meteor that night, as well as the Maryland Academy of Science, who reported that a meteor passed over Baltimore at about 7 p.m. The meteor had followed a trajectory over Maryland, Pennsylvania, and West Virginia. As for the strange mist, the smell could be attributed to local flora or perhaps hot springs, as West Virginia is known to have an abundance of natural sulfur springs. But would local residents not be able to distinguish normal smells from those from outer space? And what about the being itself? Well, get ready for a hoot, because one of the most popular theories is that what they actually saw might have been a large owl in a tree somewhere. Hoot. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. Yeah, hoot. Those who support this theory say that barn owls have anatomy similar to the creature, with a heart-shaped face and surrounded by dark feathers giving it the appearance of a hood, and large claw-like hands that might match some of the descriptions. As for its glowing red face, some suggest that the female common barn owl is reddish in color to begin with, or perhaps was being illuminated by a nearby airplane beacon mentioned earlier. Could it have been a mother owl protecting her nest, screeching at intruders as they shine flashlights at her? Or, and honestly probably more likely, was it aliens? What do we think? Let's not insult the intelligence of these people. All three of these people thought they saw an owl in headlights and they thought that it was a giant spade-shaped creature in a dress with spindly fingers, 10 feet tall. Come on, come on. <laughs> what is like the average size of a, of a barn owl? The average size of a common barn owl is about 11 to 16 inches. 
As one said, foot? It perched, perches somewhere. But their heads are like this big. Perfect. I'm a horse girl. I know barn owls. Can we get a shirt? I think that the owl theory is so limp and lame that I would much prefer the thought that it is a backpacking alien just traipsing through. Just a little, you know, vagabond alien, stick and bindle, saying, hi! And then people go, oh! <laughs> Who knows? I like that. What do you think, Arya? You know what? I'm going to say this. Uh, it's slightly, it might be a bit surprising, but I, I'm leaning towards the side that this could possibly be aliens in this regard. You know, I think, I think the other theories uh, against it aren't the strongest. Um, and the fact that these are, uh, there are multiple accounts, independent accounts, with no real relation, I'm inclined to believe that they did see something. And could it have been aliens? Possibly. Look at us, all in agreement that Braxy, whatever... He, she, they, it was, might have been, an alien. Thank you again, Merle and Aria. It's a wonderful time. I love talking aliens with y'all. And perhaps we'll see you next time. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. Was it aliens? Was it aliens? Was it aliens? Yeah.